If you're a mom, dad, or any kind of parent, you know that kids have a way of keeping you on your toes. At any given moment, somebody needs a snack, maybe a diaper change, and that last hour before bedtime is seriously the longest hour of your life. Am I right? Being a parent in itself is a big job. There's a reason they say it takes a village. But the reality with COVID-19 is that most of us just lost our village. We've lost our schools. We've lost our daycare. We can no longer ask neighbors, family, grandparents, or babysitters, or friends for help. We're doing it alone. And I think we all know this, that we're just not meant to. While I can't change the circumstances and no one knows the timelines of how long this is going to go on for, I can offer this and I know this to be true. It's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart, but it is possible. It just might not look like what you thought it would. I can pretty much guarantee that it won't be Instagrammable and you're probably cursing all the influencers who made it look easy right about now. But listen up, my fellow parent friends, I've got you covered. In this episode, you'll hear three questions to answer with your partner so you can set yourselves up for success. You're going to hear productivity tips that will help you working from home with kids. We're going to talk about the unexpected benefit and perk, and you heard me, yes, there are perks to all this that you are going to get from this experience that are going to help you for years to come. You're going to learn how to take care of yourself when I know you are so busy taking care of everyone else. You're going to get specific tips for how to work with kids, including some schedules and, frankly, what the heck to do with them. We're also going to talk about the importance of quality time and where grace plays a role in all this, and trust me, it does in all of it. You guys, I'll be honest, and I always am, it's not perfect over here. Some days it's messy and some days I struggle, but we've come a long way, and I know the things that I'm going to share will help you thrive, or at least survive faster than I did. By the end of this episode, you're going to be ready to take control and write the story of how your work from home experience goes and how your family transforms and connects through this experience. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Hey there, my friend. Thank you so much for joining for this episode of Golden Girls Podcast. I've never done an episode specifically on parents, but I know this topic is just so big and the challenge is so challenging. And I honestly have so many pieces of wisdom that I've learned through blood blood, (laughs) through blood, through sweat, through tears, and through poop that I just had to share them with you. So many of us right now are working from home and I wanted to do something special. So you guys, if you haven't already listened, make sure you listen to episode 18 and 19 of Golden Girls Podcast. In episode 18, by the way, these are all about working from home because I know this is such a transition for all of us. Episode 18 is all about creating community from home, and I interviewed a special friend, Tatiana Correa from Shopify. We talked about how to keep connections with your remote team, some of the common mistakes that people make when working from home, how to establish boundaries between your work and life, and how to keep open communication with your team, your boss, and your colleagues. In episode number 19, I share all of my perspective. I talk about setting up a great environment, the right routines, boundaries, and habits, um, how, what tools that really help me. I share some of my favorites in there, how to stay focused and eliminate distractions, and how to stay social without staying too social. Now, I thought I could squeeze it all into two episodes, but I can't because parenting is real and it's hard and it deserves its own episode or maybe 10, <laughs> but I'm going to try and squeeze it into one. And if you are parenting while working from home, this, like, you guys are in the right place. I'm so excited for this episode. All right. Before I dive in and tell you, like, all the things, here is just me, the honest truth about me. I am not a crafty mom. <laughs> I just, it's just not me. Um, I, my default has always been going to activities and getting outside. I am so grateful for my teacher friends who always give me cool ideas, but honestly, I've never done anything. We didn't have, we didn't have any craft materials at our house. We, Sonoma and I, we've done sign language and swimming and Vancouver Symphony Orchestra and gymnastics and we have a a membership to Science World and all these things because I'm that kind of mom. I'm the mom that loves to go out and have fun and 
I'm not really sure what to do at home. So just so you know, if you're thinking I'm not crafty, I'm right there with you, sister (laughs) or brother. Also, I want to say this. We live in a small space. I do not have the option to just let my kid loose in the yard or in the cul-de-sac. We live in downtown Vancouver. And honestly, we tended to be minimalist-ish, like somewhere <laughs> somewhere in there, um, because we always just thought, okay, we always go out in the city and do things. I have a friend who mentioned this the other day to me that part of our mental contract, if you will, of us living in the city is that we sacrifice space for the amenities and things around us. And that contract has been broken because suddenly we're all stuck in our smaller spaces. Basically, all my go-tos right now are gone. Swimming, classes, our building pool is closed, park, science world, our bouncy castle, our party room, play days, activities, all the things that are my parenting jam, the things that I am good at, they are gone, just like they probably are for you too. So I wanted to share that because as much as I want to be a good like stay-at-home mom in the traditional sense, I that's just not me. And I'm not crafty, so I've had to learn as I go. And I hope that knowing that, you will give yourself grace and permission if any of those things resonate with you. If you're in a small space, if your go-to routine is thrown out, if you don't have craft supplies and you don't know what you're doing <laughs> – Uh, My hand is up, but you can't see it because I always forget that we're on a podcast. Anyways, all right. So as a parent, you know that kids certainly keep us on our toes and things are always changing. Right now, I mean, we always hear that phrase, it takes a village, it takes a village, it takes a village. But all of us right now, we have lost our village. We no longer have daycare. We no longer have schools. We no longer have classes. We no longer have play dates, neighbors, support systems, all of our routines. Everything has been disrupted. It's possible that not only have you lost that, but right now you're also homeschooling or trying to do any kind of schooling or childcare or creating preschool or whatever else is happening. I know also nobody wants to be the complainer, so um, I'll say this for you. I also know that a lot of you guys get a help with a cleaner, you know, a few times a month or will get a babysitter to come for a couple date nights. And let me just say this, guys, you should not have any guilt for that. Please, like, let me be the butthole who's saying this, like, We get babysitters to come and help us for date nights. We get nannies to come help us for that. We get cleaners not as often as we should, but we're certainly going to go back to that when this is all over. So like, please take care of yourself. That's important. But right now, that's gone and no one wants to be the person to say, man, this this is really, really hard. It's important to acknowledge and be grateful for those privileges that we have. And it's also okay for us to be sad and exhausted when those resources are gone, which I know for so many of us there are. Right now, as I say this, I'm doing it alone. I know you're doing it alone and we just – just not meant to. Um, man, I wish – my heart is heavy even just saying this. I'm trying to keep – I want this podcast to be really a connection, a conversation with us. And I do feel really hopeful and I do feel like I've got some good, amazing things to share. But there's also some heaviness. So I, I can't lie about that. I can't change the circumstances. I can't – I don't know how long it's going to go on for. No one knows. And you guys listen, by the way, from all around the world, from Canada to Spain to France and England and New Zealand and the Philippines. Thank you guys so much for listening. And because of that, I know that I can't offer advice because you're all around the world. But what I can share is my own experience and the things that I've learned. I've worked from home with my daughter, Sonoma, since pretty much day one. Now, I'll be honest, like from in the very beginning, I especially it didn't work like a full day or anything like that. I worked a little bit here and there. And with the exception of about three months of daycare, though, this is real, um, Troy and I have been in, doing almost entirely on our own all the childcare for over two years now. So I want to, again, be open. I don't work a typical nine-to-five job. I have my business, um, my coaching, my speaking. Uh, we also have a real estate company. So we got lots of things going on. And some days and weeks, I work a lot of hours and sometimes I don't. I don't want to say that I work a full 40-hour week. I don't have a regular boss and I haven't – like that's not what I'm saying that I've done – I did it without childcare and if I can do it, you can too. That's not what I'm saying here and I'm actually not really sure how that's possible for anyone to do it without any help. Maybe somebody else can do it but that's not me. While I don't have a regular 9 to 5, I do have other challenges. You know, running a business is certainly – can keep me on my toes just like my kids and it's all our thing. Our real estate company keeps us really busy. And my husband also works away 15 days at a time, which leaves me completely on my own. And in the past, we would sometimes have my parents come or my in-laws come. But still, like keeping our household running, our finances, our businesses, our family thriving fell 100% on me and falls, I should say, when he's gone. I do know that working with home from – working from home with kids is not easy and it also is is possible in different ways. 
I know you're probably looking at all the Instagram pictures and the image of what you thought it would look like and thinking, oh my gosh, that is so not what it's like. And if that's that's you, that I that's real. I feel you. So my parent friends, um, I got you covered here. I also want to say, because I know some of you guys are, might be listening with your little people around, I do say the S word in this episode. I do try not to swear on this episode, but I'm going to tell you a really funny story that doesn't have the same effect without the S word. So if you're listening with kids, warn them or maybe hit pause and come back later. The swear does come a little later in the episode, but it's there. And trust me, you guys, the story is really good. You want don't want to miss it. Okay. Before I dive into all the tips, I got to say something because this is so, so, so important. There is a reason I talk so much about mindset and I'm so unbelievably passionate. People always want to know how do you do it. Give me the tips. Give me the strategies. Just give me the roadmap and let me get there. And there is a reason I don't rely on strategy. I love strategy. I love planning. Those things are helpful. But mindset matters the most because my mindset to be an awesome mom and my best self still works right now. All of our strategies, most of our strategies are gone. Like the outsourcing strategy, having other people do uh, childcare or teaching or cooking or carpooling or teaching, all of that is gone. The strategy of working in an office, that's gone. The strategy of needing time away from our kids and our, our partners to miss them, that's gone. And this is the reality that this is always in life. And that's why I'm so freaking passionate about mindset, you guys. I'm actually like doing a weird dance thing in my chair right now. Um, Strategies are going to change. Always, always, always. We cannot rely on strategies. And that's why your mindset is forever. And so you're going to hear as I share all these things, I want you to really pay attention. I'm going to talk to you about some strategies, but I want you to really pay attention to the mindset behind it all. Here is what I believe and what I want you to believe, that doing your best is all that matters that you can figure anything out, that imperfect action trumps inaction every time, that clarity comes from doing and trying, getting up there and getting in there, that life is a marathon and not a sprint. Oh my gosh, I've had to remind myself of that so many times. I want you to remember that you are in charge of your life and your experience. You're not in charge of all the circumstances, but you are in charge of your experience and how you show up for it. It's up to you and up to me for us to make it what we want. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we show up for it. So my friends, I want you to know all of that and have be grounded in that before I share any strategy. Because if I just share strategies and you think, well, that doesn't apply for me or that's different for her and she doesn't understand, then you've missed the point of this episode. What I want you to hear is that your success mindset is what matters. That is your foundation. That you doing your best is what matters. That this is a marathon, not a sprint, and that you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control how you show up. I want to say just preach it (laughs) to myself. (laughs) All right. Now let's also say and get real here. I drafted this episode. I literally started March 18th and I'm recording this, funny enough, uh, April 18th. (laughs) And you're going to see it's going to take me a few days to actually get this out. And I've had to hire help to get this out to you at a reasonable date because I just don't have the time. So Anyways, my point to telling you that is I don't have a magic wand to make your children suddenly well-behaved or give you the 40 hours that you need to get everything you want done in a day. As you can see, for me too, things are slower than normal and you're not alone. And So here are the things that keep me sane and productive and still loving my work and my family time. Ah, okay. I have one more thing I need to tell you. One more thing I want to tell you. I get the honor of doing a special shout out to Samantha Pinkson, one of our Golden Girls community members. She shared with me a few months ago now that 2019 was her biggest and best year in her business ever. So she runs Samantha Pinkson Design and Decor. Look them up on Instagram. Link in the show notes. She is a truly gifted and such a talented designer. And I wanted to obviously at first congratulate her on her success because it's amazing when we are growing in our business. That's something to absolutely celebrate. She also, we had a conversation and she shared with me three things that she found helped her. And I wanted to share them with you too because I just thought it was so inspiring. And I always, I love hearing about other successful people and what helps them get through. And I think that's probably why you're listening to this podcast too. So instead of just hearing it from me, I want you to hear it from Samantha. So she shared three little lessons. So one, she spent last year and learned about and ended up being diagnosed with adult ADHD. ADHD. I want to make sure I said that clearly. So she acknowledges and she says this is a game changer for her. And understanding her own learning style, she was able to figure out strategies and tools for working with that. And she said that changed everything. I've had conversations in my DMs with some of you guys and in in our community too. I know this is something that some of you guys struggle with too. And so I just want to thank Sam and honor her for talking about it so openly and being willing to share her story because I think adult learning disabilities, I think especially in in women, is something that does not go talk to – it doesn't get talked about enough. And so 
if you're out there, if you're listening to this, um, you're not alone and it's something that I hope that we get to talk about more because it's real and there's lots of people struggling with it. The second thing Samantha said, and this is you know something we can all learn from, she said, <laughs> what I learned is that where focus flows, energy goes. Last year was the year she really focused on her business at a whole new level and that's where her success and the money flowed. It was her most successful year in business, but not by accident. It was because she focused on it. She set intentions. She worked on her business and it shows in her results. It was the best out of eight years in her business. I, You guys know I'm, I preach, preach, preach about focus, but she's an example and I didn't even pay her to say this. She just said this on her own. Okay, last little lesson from Samantha that is so great. Something I believe that any of us can follow and whatever we're doing. For a lot of years, Samantha had this idea about what an interior designer should look like and she admits this, that she used to tone her personality down. She worried about what she looked like showing up to meetings and wanted to look professional and wanted to, you know, quote, look like what an interior designer looked like. Well, last year she changed that. She decided to lean into being authentically her and she even let her self-described heavy tattoos come up to play. She was worried at first that she was going to lose clients or that people wouldn't hire her. And the fun and amazing thing is that the opposite has in fact been true. She now attracts more of the right people. Her business is thriving and her clients who love her are now working with her. There are so many lessons in this for all of us. Always learn more about yourself and don't shy away if you're struggling with mental health or learning disabilities. Guys, focus, focus, focus. Focus is where your magic is. That's where the magic will come. And be authentic because that's how you're going to attract those who matter the most. Thank you, Sam, so much for these lessons. And I just want to give you the giant hug over here. Congratulations on all of your success. I've linked to Sam below in our show notes. If you want to check out this amazingly talented designer who's also tattooed and yes, works and consults remotely too, so you can catch it from anywhere in the world you're listening to, go ahead and give her some love below. I love featuring our success stories from Golden Girls Mastermind and Golden Girls Community and our listener shout outs. If you are in our community, we want to celebrate you. So reach out, let me know. I would love to give you a shout out. And if you leave a review for Golden Girls Podcast, we will give you a shout out too. My business and this podcast only exist because of you. And I love taking the time to celebrate with you, to cheer you on, and to thank you. All right, now we're getting into the meat. I'm sorry. I know that was really long, but I I hope that was all really valuable because there's so much more than just tips and strategies, guys, that I want you to hear. So here we're going to go into the three questions to talk about with your partner to get you set up for success working from home with kids. I'm going to share productivity tips to help you out. We're going to talk about the unexpected benefit and perk that you're going to get from this experience that is going to help you for years to come. And trust me, I know it doesn't feel like it, but it's there. We'll talk about how to take care of yourself when you're busy taking care of all the other people, specific tips for working with kids and what the heck to do with them, the importance of quality time and how to have grace. So let's dive in and talk about how to make this the best possible experience for everyone. Okay, do you guys hear that? That is my kid crying. So I'm actually going to have to hit pause on this and I'm going to come back and record it a little later. So in case you're wondering, this is real life. I could not have scripted that. I thought she was going to nap a lot longer than that. But you know what? We just go with it. So um, (laughs) thanks for listening. I'll be back in a bit to finish up this episode. (laughs) I'm back. I'll be honest. This is the third time I've had to stop and start and stop and start recording this episode. And I feel like that's just perfect way to sum up the experience of working out with children, period. So in case you're thinking I have some magic wand or that things aren't challenging over here, now you know that they definitely are and I don't have it all figured out. Um, so here I am back. It is 9 o'clock at night, Saturday night, uh, still April 18th, and I'm finishing up recording this episode for you guys, but I really believe in what I'm sharing and when you really want to get something done when you love what you're doing, which I am blessed to do, it makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's talk about the first thing to help make your work at home experience with kids a little better. And this is to get your foundation right, to get on the same team as your partner and communicate, communicate, communicate. This advice, I got to say this, if you're in a an abusive situation, I know that that's, that's happening a lot with people in close quarters, please get help, get support. I know this also is challenging for families that are separated and um, I, I just want to say like the, I don't know what's working for you guys and I think either way, no matter what situation you're in, communication is a foundation. In this specific advice here, I'm talking to families for whom Sure, being in close quarters, it is a stressful time. Uh, There might be financial or health or fears, anxiety, those things happening, but you're otherwise doing well. Um, So 
if you're doing well otherwise, and I get that it's harder with kids and it's hard right now, but if you want to make it through working from home and through COVID as a family, this is what you got to do is you got to get on the same team. I got to tell you, I mentioned this in this episode and some of you guys know this. My husband works away for two weeks and then he's home for two weeks. A lot of people always ask us, how do you guys do it? How do you do it? How do you feel about it? Here's how I feel. It's been five years since we started this. When we started, our lives were very different. We were both in full-time jobs, living in Fort McMurray. I had a really awesome friend circle, and it was pretty easy. I mean, it definitely took a little bit of an adjustment period. I think it it always does. But overall, like the hardest thing was that I had to figure out how to mow the lawn. (laughs) Now we have a two-year-old. We have our real estate company and my business, and we live in downtown Vancouver, and it's just very different. But I always say this, and when people say, how do you do this? I always say it's because we're on the same team. We're doing it for the same reason, and it's because we both respect and appreciate so much what each other does for our relationship, for our family, for our goals, and for our dreams. It is him and I against the world. It is us and our goals and our dreams and working together to make it happen. And I can honestly say I don't think this would work if we didn't have that attitude. If I resented him from working away or he was jealous of me being here, I don't think it would work. Like we really both have to be on the same team. And so the same thing has to go for you guys. Wherever you're at, no matter what your situation is or what your jobs are at, you guys have to be on the same team. And it doesn't matter what your goal is or what your primary objective is, what your values are as a family, you've just got to be aligned on those and figure out, okay, what are the important things here? You guys... You guys both had to link arms, hug each other, whatever, and face the challenges together because the more you stick together and you're on the same page, the better you're going to come out of all of this. I recommend three questions here to chat through, to talk with each other, and get aligned. So here's the first question. I think it's important to understand what your enough is. And what is that for work? What is that for self-care? What is that for finances, for parenting? What is your enough? What is your baseline as a couple, as a family, as a relationship? This is something I think is so good to talk to your partner and maybe even with your children too. You know, what is enough for them as far as the housework that they're doing around the house or the time that they need from you or the homework that you expect out of them or whatever's happening? This enough is going to depend on what your finances are, your goals are, your values, your employer, the age of your child or how many children you have, any special needs, the support that you have. I know some some people do have nannies available. Some people do have grandparents or aunts nearby. I don't know why I just said aunts. It makes me sound fancy, I guess. Um, but I, everybody's answer on this is going to be different. Maybe you both have to work right now. There are some people that I know that are working on the front line and so – uh, maybe one person's working on the front line and somebody's having to work from home in another critical position. And so you're releasing screen time expectations and letting it go. And that is okay as long as you're both on the same team and you know that. Maybe both of you guys are in positions where you can cut your hours a bit and you can trade off with the kids. Maybe you decide that you're going to sign kids up for online activities. Maybe this is a time to put a pause on a job or a business for now and instead you soak up extra business time. Everybody's finances and goals and values and families means that this answer is going to be different. Please don't judge yourself or judge others. This is just so personal. Do the best you can with what you have right now and um, decide what that enough is for you guys. You know, what, how, how do you want to manage the work that you're doing, the housework, the family dynamics, the self care that you need, and make sure everyone's on the same page on that. I do think right now there is so much change happening and this is a really – by the way, I'm recording this episode in the middle of COVID-19, but I do believe that this works – this will work for any time, that things are going to change. Your children are going to grow up and situations are evolving always. And so it's important, I think, to revisit this every week or even every week. If you and your family don't do it already, I highly recommend doing a weekly family check-in to see what's working and what might need to change. But that's your first question. If you're putting your foundation in place for you as a partnership – and communicating, you've got to get clear on what enough is and what the right situation is for you guys. For Troy and I, just so you have a sense of this, when Troy's away, uh, especially with no childcare, I will do work as much as I can during nap times and maybe in the mornings and the evenings. But 
and this is something that I I want to do this. I do it. Troy's always like, just don't work. Just worry about the kid. But I love what I do. So it's hard to hard to do that. And then when he's home, he steps in and does pretty much full time. He does a lot of parenting. Let's say that. He's a wonderful, super engaged dad. But there are also times where if he needs me to step in, this is where I'm talking about this evolving. Like when we're doing different real estate transactions or maybe he's sick or maybe he's had a really tough round at work that maybe I'll have to step in and help out more. So um, Or vice versa. If I have a launch coming up, then he's got to step in more. So this is where it is. Like, what do you guys both need? What is enough? And what is it gonna? What does it really look like for you guys to meet your goals and and feel good about it as a family together? Second question you want to communicate with your partner is to figure out what absolutely must get done. What are your non-negotiables? So the first question is like, what is enough? What's our baseline? And the second is, what are the musts? What's got to get done? So this is both work and personal. And this is how much work do you need to get done and want to get done and what would an ideal schedule potentially look like? I know some people, their workload has gone down. Some people's workload has gone up. Some people are out of work. Some people's businesses have never been busier. Some people's businesses are, are lower. Figure that out and like what are the timelines on that? What meetings do you have to be at? What projects need to get down? What kind of timelines? Be really clear on the non-negotiables for work and also then for personal. So what are your personal non-negotiables? Maybe it's certain chores. Maybe you just cannot handle having dishes in the sink. Maybe it's showers. I'm a big like I love my shower. That just makes me feel like my day has started. Um, and whatever might be non-negotiable to you might also be flexible. But just know what it is for you and your kids and get clear on that. And then basically be flexible on everything else. When Troy came home last time for two weeks, we had this conversation. By the way, most pretty much all of what I share is things that I found that work or they, it's worked for my clients um, or I've learned it from people that are really highly successful. But this, this one, this is all stuff that we've been doing. So this one is, um, so we, Troy came home, we had the conversation. It was like, well, what is your non-negotiable and what is my non-negotiable? And mine was, I need a workout every morning and a shower. And his was, he needs me to put my phone away and have quality time with Sonoma when I'm not working. He's a pretty great dad. Um, and I have a hard time with putting my phone away, full transparency. So before we, that was that was really important. And then we also did this before he left. So I also talked about how we could support and honor each other while we were away. And I asked him to check in on me and check in on my anxiety and help me relax the crazy pressure I put on myself. Like I just said, I, I definitely do that. Um, and also I asked him to let me order pre-made meals. <laughs> so um, that was, those are the kind of conversations that we're having. It's just a, like, I can't say it enough. Communicate, communicate, communicate. When you're on the same team, it makes this stuff a lot easier because um, I get it. It's hard. It's stressful. And the third question, those ones are kind of like your your foundation and then your must-haves and the things you're just going to let go of. This third question to chat about with you got with you and your partner, your family is what's the experience you want to have? What What is the story you're writing of this time? And this time could be COVID-19. This time could be as you're building a business and you have young children or as you're out of work down the road or you've had another child, you've lost childcare. Like we have multiple times or um, whatever that is. But remember, it's everything that what really matters here is how you frame it in your mind and in your kid's mind because that's how they're going to remember it and that's how you're going to remember it. Even if you do have to work a lot, there's ways to frame it in a really positive experience. Like communicate with your kids that what you did, what was important, that you still had dinners together, that you spent an, half an hour outside together, whatever you could. It's really important for you to just be intentional here. It's not about perfect. It's not about saying we never got mad at each other. We spent every minute together in perfect heaven. Like sometimes it's hard. I recently went to an event and I heard the founder of a company called Poodoos and I'm actually <laughs> wearing my Poodoos right now. If you've never checked them out, they're amazing slipper socks. So good. Um, anyways, I heard her talk about the experience. Um, she's a local entrepreneur and a mom and she talked about the experience of her Poodoos getting onto Oprah's favorite things. How cool. Amazing. And also how the six weeks leading up to Christmas was crazy and she had to pull her family in. And basically they were working from like six in the morning till 10 or 11 or 12 at nighttime and the kids were helping and everyone in the, and the neighbors and everyone was in it. And it was a crazy time. And what I took away from that story was uh, obviously very cool. What an amazing entrepreneurial story. And I'm so proud to have gotten to meet her and love her products. Poodoo's, check them out. And also what I heard was, is she could have told that story in a way that was like, 
oh my gosh, it was was so hard to build this business. What a struggle. We've had to sacrifice so much stuff and we haven't been with our, we weren't with our kids and and our kids missed out on all these things. But instead, the way she described it, and I'm sure the way her kids will remember it because of the way she framed it and was probably very intentional about this, was like, it was a family thing. They built it together. They had this cool experience together. And yeah, they were tired and yeah, they ordered it and a lot of pizza, um, but it was a really special time. And so I just want you to consider that. Like, what is the experience you want to have and what's the story you're writing? Because every day you're writing the story. And um, I just, I want to thank uh, thank that. I think that story just helped me look at COVID-19 in a really different way. Not as cool as Oprah's favorite things, let's be clear on that. But at the same time, it's the way we frame it, the way we communicate with our children, what we say is important, and how we're showing them what we value as a family and what's important to us. Consider, with all of this stuff, guys, consider what's going to work best for you and communicate with your partner. And remember, you're on the same team. Even if one of you snores a little too much or chews too loud, whatever that is, or doesn't know how to put their socks away, communicate, communicate, communicate. Check in daily or midday if you have to. Remember this, you guys. And I, man, I'm going to talk about grace. So like, It's coming. (laughs) But your family is looking to you as a role model. And that doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Like, heck no. But it means that you are capable of more than you think. It means you are capable of more grace, of love, of compassion, of leadership, teamwork, and focus than you think. You are capable of all of that. All right. Number two. (laughs) It is possible to make it work. Absolutely. But it is not possible to do it all with children. That's just not a thing. Children are like a full-time job in themselves and then some and then a household. So here are a few productivity tips that I find help to at least have a little bit of productivity. Know your personality and your work style and your kids' personalities and work as much as you can to match those things. The ages and personalities of our kids are going to vary widely. Some kids might nap, you know, six or eight hours a day, like the newborns, they're sleeping all the time. I wish I'd taken advantage, side note. Um, And others might not nap at all. Some kids are really happy playing independently and some are going to need more attention. And even on different days, I noticed that with my daughter, on some days she's totally fine and plays by herself and other days she doesn't want me to pee by myself. So this is something we, we cannot control. So just do your best with knowing how your kid's personality style and what yours is too. Another little tip, decipher and decide what you can do with your kids around and what you can't. I struggle with this quite a bit because there's a lot of things I can't do with my kid. Um, A lot of what I do needs me to be in like a creative zone. For example, this podcast, putting together the, the content, like, if I'm always being pulled away and it's not something I could do on my phone while I'm also hanging out with my kid. It's just not. I really need focus attention to figure out what is the most important thing that I need to share with you. And then of course to record it, it's the same thing. And same thing with editing. I've lost files because I've come back and forth. So there are certain things that I really struggle with that I can't do with her. Um, but there are a lot of things I can do with her. I take some conference calls with her. Uh, masterminds I often do with my daughter. They're not my paid one except for right now because I have no choice. Uh, or sorry, I should say not the one like my Golden Girls Mastermind that my clients are paying for. Right now, we're doing bonus calls and my daughter's there. But nor like other masterminds that I do with peers, I, I have her there sometimes. I run banking errands with Sonoma because it's sometimes necessary and I try and make it fun for her too. Um, podcast recordings. Like I said, something that needs to be in my office because I have my mic set up here and it's not, it's not ready for Sonoma to be here. Uh, and I'm not ready for her to be here. So as you've heard through this episode, I record during naps or early mornings or late at nights. And like I said, I might, I might even be, rec- <laughs> I'm recording this at night. I might be interrupted again for the third time, but it's the best that I can do. And that is, it is what it is. For client calls is something I try and do without her. So I'm just telling you, by the way, like the things that I've decided and how I think about these things. But for client calls, I make sure I don't have any distractions because I want to bring my A game. That's what my clients deserve. Um, so I schedule those for when my husband is home. Basically, so there's like a guarantee that she's not going to wake up because her naps are kind of all over the place right now. So <sighs> there's also been some messes in this. It has not has not been perfect. Because I do bring my daughter to certain things. She's, she's there. She... <laughs> pooped on me in a mastermind call. So that was fun. Um, And on another live video, she whipped off her diaper and flashed our entire Golden Girls community. And don't you worry, I'm going to be sharing photos and videos in my social media and the show notes. So you're going to want to check those out for a good laugh. I think right now, more than ever, everybody's in the same boat. And so we have to just figure out what's the easiest things we can do with our kids and what can we not. (laughs) 
when you're doing the work, here's another little productivity tip. Shut down all other distractions. Can we just agree that kids are distracting enough? Like they literally don't even let you go to the bathroom by yourself. So put your phone away. Turn off your email notifications. Turn the TV off if you can. Like get into another room. Go somewhere separate if if your kids are older. As many distractions as possible, turn them all off. Before you get the work, you get to work, set your kids up and prep them and like communicate with them. Let them know what is happening. Get them food. One of the things that I'm doing right now is pre-cutting and pre-washing veggies and fruit and crackers and having those things ready to go. Give them a little bit of a snack. Give them some water. Help them go to the washroom. Put on a fresh diaper. Like all of those kind of foundational things. And then the other thing I do is I give her at least a couple activities. I don't put them all on at once, but I have them in my mind or have them prepared to easily give to her. So um, maybe it's that she's going to do a music class on, or she loves cosmic yoga or she loves dancing, so I might turn on a video. Or if I'm desperate, I'm like, okay, Peppa Pig it is. I will have a puzzle ready to go I'll, or a matching game. I'll have coloring ready. But like have a few things, potential activities that you can easily redirect with your children so that you can get as much focus time as possible. A cool idea that I've heard that I did a little bit of actually is um, to make your kids a little office in your space too. So set up a desk, give them some paper, a pen, or let them color. Uh, Depending on their age, you can give them a scissors, maybe give them post-it notes depending on your tolerance for that. But that's – I did that a little bit. (laughs) Funny enough, I – put Sonoma, I brought her a little chair and I have her slide in my office right now. And I let her like write, um, using the top of the slide as a little desk. You can even use an old laptop, which we've done a few days. And I give her an, a keyboard sometimes to like let her feel like she's a little adult. And that gives me sometimes about 15 minutes to, if I need to fire off an email or do something that's, that's, I, it's way better for me to do on my laptop because it's way faster. Um, and it keeps her excited and engaged. Uh, productivity tip, another one, work in small sprints. Uh, ideally, we want to do like 50-minute sprints. Not always pop- possible with young children. So what can you do in 20 minutes? What can you do in 10? Just break it down, set a timer, and set an intention of what you're going to do and do your best to get it done. Now, even though my daughter is only two right now, I still let her know what's going on and I try and talk to her and include her. Um, just let her know. You know, mama's got some work to do. Uh, Something that I've been trying to do is put all my meetings as much as possible on one day so or two days a week. So that that, those are the days that I'm getting the work done and I release the guilt for the screen time or all that. And then on the other days, I do something fun with her and we get out of the house or we're watching um, and dancing together or we're playing with sand or we're doing things that are just feel good together. But that I find has helped me to not feel like I'm constantly working and also feels like I'm giving her quality time. But on the days when I'm working, like there's several hours where I'm not necessarily interacting with her as much as I would love to. I'm definitely releasing screen time guilt. If it is working for her, it is working for me. Um, And I got to say this, guys, if there's work that you need to do, do not make this harder on yourself for guilting yourself for screen time or for not being a good enough parent. We are in uncharted waters here. We are doing our best. It is okay to want to improve. It is okay to want to be better. We all want to be great parents. Just make sure you're not making yourself feel worse because that's not going to solve anything. A few other things I want to call out that really do help. I mentioned them in the last episode, but I think with kids, it's like super duper helpful. Headphones, 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 or music. Um, If I'm listening to pop-up music, I might even turn on the Bluetooth speakers and let Sonoma dance here. And when I really need to focus on something, I'll put a headphone in. Another thing about working from home, I just realized I forgot this, but I'm usually really consistent. So Keep your fingers crossed for me for tonight. So um, when you're working from home, especially with kids, it's really easy, maybe too easy to work flexible hours. And sometimes we have to work when our kids are asleep like I'm doing tonight. But there is a challenge with working late at night. And I usually try not to do it um, because I then I struggle to fall asleep. And you've probably heard of the challenges of blue light. You don't want to take in blue light before bed. So I do two things. Uh, of course, I forgot one of them tonight. I usually wear Bluetooth filtering glass. I usually put them on around 8 o'clock at night and then, and then they're on there. Um forgot to do that tonight. My bad. But I'm usually really consistent. To What I do have on my computer, luckily, because I'm looking at my notes here for the episode, is I use an app called Flux. And that allows my screen to get rid of the blue light for nighttime work. So as somebody who – I'm a working mom who has struggled with consistent childcare, and I've had to work some evenings for sure. And this helps me be able to work in the evenings and still fall asleep, which is really important when you're looking after kids and looking after yourself. So I've added the links for all of these below too so you can check out the Flux app and check out the blue light glasses that I have. And on your phone too, there's a way to do this as well. So just check out – do a Google search for your phone model and it'll tell you how to um, 
get rid of the blue light. So anyway, that's something that I've done to get more consistent sleep, even on the odd time like today that I have to work a little later. And honestly, I've started using the glasses, even if we're just watching TV or something like that or hanging out with Troy. Um, it sounds kind of funny. He makes fun of me, but I don't care because I can fall asleep and it's wonderful. Something else I realized, just a little hot tip about the blue light glasses. I don't, I used to wear them like all day because I thought it would be better for me, but I now I don't wear them in the mornings because I learned that blue light can actually wake you up, which makes sense because that's why you don't wear them. That's why you wear them at night. So you're not looking at blue light at night. But the problem was, is that I was feeling really groggy during the day. And so what I do, I don't wear the blue light glasses in the morning. I put them on kind of in usually closer to the end of the day, but play around with it and see for when it works for you to start using them and for how long. Okay, now that's a little bit of productivity tips. Stay tuned because in my number six tip, I'm going to share with you a fun little hack that I found for keeping Sonoma entertained while I work. And it works for me even though I'm not a super creative or like crafty, (laughs) teacher-y type. Um, I'm I'm not used to doing things like this with my kids. So um, yeah, stay tuned. That's a really – I've got a fun little tip that I'm super excited to share with you. Okay, number three about working from home right now with your kid. This is actually going to be an incredible – incredible gift. This is going to be an experiment for you in what is actually important. This is going to serve you for years to come. Let's just be real for a minute here. Most people, okay, we may go to work for eight hours or go to work for 10 hours, but most of us don't actually do work for that long. Time studies prove this over and over and over again. Most people work a lot less than they think that they do. And most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that we do isn't necessarily stuff we have to do. This is something I learned the hard way. I learned, I mean, I knew this principle from being in corporate and from being in a role called continuous improvement where we focused on this kind of thing. But even in my life, my business, I – before we got childcare and then before we lost it and then got it and then lost it again. That's a whole other story for a whole other podcast. But my, I kept saying, well, as soon as we get childcare, I'm going to be so much more productive. As soon as we get childcare, I'm going to make – I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to have more time. I'm going to – see my friends again. I'm going to exercise, whatever these, the, all these things. I'm going to do all the things. And we had childcare for about three or four months. And honestly, I made no extra revenue. And more time just meant I felt my days with more time. I found myself still being exhausted, still being stressed and still not doing all the good things. And I share my lessons from that experience on podcast, Golden Girls podcast episode number seven, eight, and nine, all about time management. So if you want to hear more about that, go back and listen to those because they're really good if I say so myself. <laughs> uh, but here's what you can distill from this experience right now is that I find working from home with kids forces you to be more productive. You cannot do like a 40 or 50 or 60 hour week. And so you got to figure out what is really essential. And this is the time to be hyper-focused on what matters. And you're probably going to find that the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, that 20% of things that you do gives you 80% of the results – that's where you're going to figure out what are those 20% of things and how can you double down on that and start to release and forget the other things. I really believe, guys, that this is going to be a gift from COVID-19. It's going to be this necessity. We are all feeling that. We just do not have the capacity. So we're going to have to reevaluate what really moves the needle in our work and our personal lives, frankly, and what doesn't. And we're going to only have time for that 20%. And I feel like in our minds, we think, okay, well, if I'm only working 20% or then, you know, I'm going to lose 80% of what I'm doing, that's not the case. So figure out what it is that you do that moves the needle and focus on that. Is it posting on social media? What exactly do you need to be doing and how much of it? Is it emails? Would a quick video work better? What, What about meetings? Which ones could you do an email for? How can you prioritize what's most important? It's the same thing with personal too. You know, is there one TV show that you love to watch, but then you end up watching three episodes in a row and by the third one, you're actually just scrolling on your phone and hasn't added any real value to your life and now you're tired the next day. Just me? <laughs> um, I've gotten good at this over the years, but it's taken me time. Cut it down. Focus on the things in your personal life that bring you the most joy and I have to get better with it on my phone. I'm good on the TV. I'm not so good on my phone. So that's something that I'm hoping is going to come out of this. Now, you guys know I'm a huge fan of outsourcing. Daycare is a form of outsourcing or even teaching. Um, Getting extra help with cooking, cleaning, anything. A lot of those things I know they're a lot harder to do right now, if not impossible. But for me, what I've done is shift this a little bit. So two things I'm doing to help out a bit. Um, I'm getting some pre-made meals made and delivered to the house just to help because the whole grocery shopping thing is really hot, difficult and cooking with Sonoma Home. So I get a couple meals a week that I don't have to worry about, which is really wonderful. 
I'm also looking at as a chance to invest in my business and outsource more there. So right now I'm going through over 30 applicants for an entry level VA to come help me out. Yay, I'm so excited about that. Um, it's really cool because it's something I've been wanting, saying I'm going to do for years and I haven't done and it's it's time. I also have started outsourcing with some help on these podcast episodes because each episode was taking me eight to 10 hours or more, which is insane, right? Um, and especially when right now I'm only getting about five to 10 hours of work a week sometimes, to do all of that on the podcast would take me two weeks to do an episode and that would be before serving any client or doing any of the other things that need to get done. So while I while I do love this podcast, I still love it so much, it's not a big revenue stream for me right now. So my first priority is my customers, my Golden Girls Mastermind, Golden Girls Community, and my speaking clients. So I'm outsourcing some of the other things to I can so I can just focus on my magic, which is where the best use of my time is going to be. And I really believe that this is my story, this is my business, this is my example here, but I believe for all of us, we're going to figure out like what are the things that we really need to be doing and what are the things that someone else could be doing and what are the things that don't need to happen at all. All right, number four, take care of yourself. <sighs> Seriously, and make it quality downtime. This cannot be understated. I know it feels like you don't have time because you're just exhausted. Trust me, I know that feeling. My friend Matt Corker always says, if you're exhausted, you give out exhaust. And that's so true. If we are exhausted, we just, <laughs> I can literally just like imagine the pup, 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 pup of an engine. And that's what we're spitting into the faces of everyone we love and all the people in our lives. And that's not what any of us really want. So Here's what I found works for me, even though I'm solo parenting and running a business and trying to be a great mom as much as I can. This isn't going to work for everyone, but uh, it has worked for me. And even though I'm not a morning person, hear me out here. So I have started to get up earlier. What I find happens, and I think this happens with a lot of people, and I know some of you guys are going to nod your head when I say this, but at the end of the day, you're exhausted, right? And you still, you crave some you time. So instead of going to bed right away, you're like, okay, I'm just going to scroll on my phone or you zone out on Netflix and then you can't sleep. Right? Yeah? No, not not just me? Not Yeah? Okay. I know it's an internet meme for a reason because so many of us feel this way. We're like exhausted, but that by the end of the day, we're like, I just, I can't even go to sleep because I haven't had any time for myself. But here's the thing. We both, we, we all know that the, the zoning out on Netflix, the scrolling on your phone or struggling to fall asleep, like that's not quality downtime. That's not the kind that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that this week or I'm so, unless it's a show that you really love, but I'm talking about like zoning out on Netflix or even, or even trying to read a book and trying to reread the same page 50 times because you're just not absorbing it, right? We know the difference between quality downtime and junk downtime, right? That That's what I'm going to call it. Quality versus junk downtime. So for me, I have flipped this around. So I get up an hour or two before Sonoma and that is my me time. And I also, with again, with the exception of tonight and last night, I pretty much go to bed right after my kid does or very shortly after. Because what I found happen is that um, when I'm getting her ready for bed, apparently her the nighttime routine really works on mommy too because I feel really tired. And so what it does is I feel like I, I wind down and so me going to bed and I'm able to shawl, fall asleep very shortly afterwards, and then I can wake up early and get going on my day. Otherwise, what I find happens, and it's tonight wasn't so bad, but we'll find out if I'm still tossing and turning at midnight. What I find happens is I wind down as I'm getting Sonoma ready for bed, and then I have to wind myself back up to work to get my mind going, and then I have to wind myself, and I have to do the work, and then I have to wind myself right back down, and that takes like literally hours, hours. So instead of going to bed at like between 9 and 10, I'm not going to bed till like midnight or 1 or 2 or 3 in the morning and then trying to get up the next day with a kid and it doesn't work. So for me, this is what I've done is I flip that script and I allow the wind down I do with my daughter to be the wind down I do for myself too, again with the exception of tonight. <laughs> um, but that's that's been working so well for me and I am not a morning person but I love my me mornings and it also is like it, – it gets me out of bed because I'm like, okay, I get to do whatever it is for me. So I love to do a workout or do a stretch or both. I drink a lemon ginger water before my son wakes up. Sometimes I journal. I meditate. Um, on Monday mornings, Troy and I plan out our week together. We, sometimes we have chats. Uh, sometimes we make out before she gets up, whatever. You know, like that time is so important and it's been really great. Right now, the world is kind of crazy. And so we have to love on ourselves. We have to. Maybe it is a bath. Maybe it is a Netflix show that you love. Just make sure it is quality downtime for you. Now, here is also some truth for you. And I know this to be true. If you do not take quality downtime, your body will force you to take it. And that is what that like end of the day when you're so exhausted but you just cannot drag yourself to bed, that is what your body does to you. And um, 
you will get sick. You will be exhausted. Like it will not work. Your body will make you zone out. You'll procrastinate. Those things will come up and they'll show up in different places of your life. I was hoping to take this weekend fully off and then Sonoma wasn't napping this week and so I fell further and further and further behind and I started to feel really guilty. So I was going to work right through the weekend and without fail yesterday, I ended up having a mild anxiety attack. Today, I had a horrible headache this morning and so I'm literally going to go to bed like right after I'm done this and I'm committing to taking tomorrow completely off of work. That is because sometimes I'm human and I forget to take my own advice, but it's always true. Our bodies know we need a break. We need a break and they will force us to take one. So do yourself a favor, guys. Give yourself a high quality break because I'm going to do that for myself too because I know if I just spent, had an anxiety, mild anxiety attack and if I just have a, had a headache, like me working more is not going to help this. I obviously need some sort of a break. I need to relax. So let's just go back to mindset real quick here. If you aren't taking care of yourself, and I said mindset is the foundation, like the strategies are going to change. The strategies are are going to vary depending on what your personality is, your kids are, the ages, the situations, all the things. Those are going to vary. But if you aren't in the right place, your mindset won't be right. You need to take care of yourself so you can be successful in whatever circumstances come your way. You need to be resilient and creative. You need to be resourceful. You need to show up with possibility and imperfection and take aligned and consistent action. As these strategies change and some of these things that I share will work for you and some of them might not and some might not be possible in whatever area or um, season of life you're in. But remember, mindset matters most and you cannot have a solid mindset if you aren't taking care of yourself first. So make sure with you and your, both you and your partner that you are talking about what do you need. Do you need to chat with a girlfriend? Do you need to go for a walk by yourself? Do you need to go to the grocery store by yourself? Because that sounds like heaven right now. <laughs> Whatever it is, take care of yourself and support your partner to get what they need too. Okay, let's talk about some specific tips for working with kids, the schedule, what to do with them, all the stuff. So remember before I share this, this is some of my experience and some of the things that I've heard my friends and clients do too. Some may work and some don't. Strategies will change always, 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 but a success mindset is forever. So focus on the mindset and focus on your resiliency, your creativity, and knowing that you can make this work. So here are some of the things that have worked for me from my personal experience. I'm going to share a little bit about um, how I worked with Sonoma through her ages. That's kind of specific. And then I'll talk about some more general stuff. So with young babies, I mean, you're really tired. And I found it really hard to work more than a few hours a week in the very beginning when Sonoma was a newborn. The biggest thing I did was lower my expectations. (laughs) Do what you can in small sprints of work and get your partner to help as much as possible. That's all I can say for having really young babies. I've heard when you have a second and a third and a fourth that it I don't know if you're used to sleep deprivation or whatever, but with the first, my gosh, I was exhausted. I was so shocked that I really had almost no capacity to work. So lowering expectation, that works. For <laughs> That works. When Sonoma was about six months to about a year old, she was having two naps a day. And so I would work in the morning before she got up. I would work during her naps and then again after she went to bed. I've said this before, but I just want to like – underline and highlight this, I wouldn't recommend after work, bedtime working as a sustainable option. A bedtime work, I do it very, very rarely, but I did it in the beginning, but truly it, it was unsustainable. It is unsustainable and I was on the edge of burnout. So I don't do it often now. Once your kids get mobile and they need attention, which is Sonoma right now and that like two-ish, I work sometimes if I have to. Most of the time in the morning, I try and make that like me time um, unless Troy's home. Sometimes if I got work to do, I'll do that too. I'll meet with my team because I've got team uh, across the world right now. Work work a little bit in the morning. Um, I'll work during her nap, maybe one to two hours. And this is something that I've learned from my friend Sarah who has four kids, four and under. I try not to get too attached to the naps, which is difficult. I Some days Sonoma doesn't nap and I used to get really frustrated, not with her, but with myself. It was like, oh, I should be doing more, could be doing more. Now I have to do it tonight and it was just so hard and Now what I've had to do is say to myself, it's okay if nothing gets done during the day. It's okay if nothing gets done today and really self-talk myself through this. I also just want to acknowledge in here that I'm in such a grateful position where I don't have to work all the time and I'm not expected, besides in my own head, to work a full hour a day, a full eight-hour day. And I really empathize and I know some of you guys are still trying to do this with full workloads and children and I really hope, I know a lot of workplaces are giving you support and I hope that's what you're getting. Because it's freaking hard. And I see you and I respect you and I honor you. All right, let's talk about a few kind of more family specific things. So um, try and think about what might work for your family and then release the rest of them. So consider what activities you may want to do with your kids around and which ones are going to need more focus and organize your day around that. So for example, you might be able to respond to certain emails on your phone 
um, easily post to social media, which I do sometimes with her, host some networking calls with your kids around. But if you're doing something creative or brain intensive or something that requires focus, it's or recording a podcast, for example, better to do without the kids. So have an idea of that and f- figure that out. Set up a calendar that for you and your kids and communicate it and post it. Let them know where and when you'll be working and when you're going to have family time. Give them activities, books, movies, whatever to keep them learning or at least distracted. Um, I heard a tip the other day that another mom is, she puts the closed captioning on if her kids are watching TV so they're like reading as well and sometimes she'll even do it in a different language so they have to try and learn another or she'll get the movie in a different language so they're learning a different language. So I thought that was pretty fun too. What I've been doing with Sonoma, again, one or two days a week where I'm working and I let her watch TV or do other activities and then the other days I'm really focusing on spending time with her. Keep working in smaller sprints. What can you do in 20 minutes or 10 minutes? Chunk it down and focus in whatever time you do have. Um, trade work hours with your partner if you, if you can. Maybe one of you works for an hour or two while the other takes the kids and then swap that out. Here's another thing I do, which is kind of funny, but um, sometimes, I, so I have dual screens and I, if you're curious more about my work at home, my work at home, yeah, my work at home setup, um, I talk all about that in episode 19 of Golden Girls Podcast, so listen to that. But I have dual screens here and so sometimes what I do is I will put all my work on one screen and I'll sit Sonoma next to me and I'll use the other screen to entertain her. Sometimes I just play music or I might turn it into like YouTube and put on Baby Shark or let her do some yoga or dance around. Is it my favorite parenting style? Nope. But sometimes things need to get done and at least we're in it together. And I also get to, you know, jump in and dance with her a little bit or do some clapping or a downward dog. So it's not perfect. It's not my ideal, like what I wish I was. Or I should, here I am. I say I get myself too. It's not the best parenting maybe that I would dream of all the time. But right now it's working and we're making it fun and we're making it work for the, for us. And she's enjoying it. And like I said, guys, I got to tell you <laughs> – I really do include her in a lot. I, I include her in Facebook Lives. When events, I bring her to a lot of events. I do networking events and meetups. And okay, let me quickly just tell you. So I told you that um, Sonoma's been on my mastermind calls. Here's the swear, by the way, coming up. So uh, on this mastermind call, she pooped and then sat on me and there was poop all over me, all over my pants. And then I started laughing and she turns around and looks at me and she goes, oh, shit. Like she's she's never sworn before. She's never heard the S word before. But on a client call, she dropped it. So <laughs> that was so good. I'm so lucky that I have the best clients. Like, oh. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, with the same clients, uh, last week, just last week, she came out to my office and um, – somehow pooped down the stairs. Like we have a lot of poop issues right now. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. And I got to tell you, I may or may not have a recorded video of the oh shit moment and may or may not have uploaded it into the show notes for you to have a laugh. So make sure you check that out. I think you're going to love it. Okay. No more swearing. I know there's kids here. (laughs) Maybe. All right. So I also did a Facebook live in my community and Sonoma was watching Peppa Pig, which, uh, Thank goodness, by the way, Netflix is not pay by the hour because we'd be we'd be owing Netflix a lot. And she literally was like, mommy, mommy. And I was like, oh, so cute. And I turned my camera, I turned myself around, I turned around to say hi. And she had ripped off her clothes, her diaper, everything. It was just like waving and laughing. And it was live and streaming to my whole community and everyone had a great laugh. So this is to say, guys, that it's not all perfect. And not – maybe other people aren't into it, but – in this season of my life, um, and I say this, by the way, in my season of my life, like not COVID, I mean of being a mom with young kids, and I love including her, and I've been surrounded by other people who support me in this, and I like really, I think I've created this community where my clients are okay with it, and I'm okay with it too, and um, I just don't have space for anything else, and I think COVID-19 has made that extra, extra clear for everyone. I'm really lucky to have amazing clients and community and friends, and we can just laugh about this because, guys, it's life, and we just we can't take it too seriously. And uh, if you haven't been pooped on, are you really a parent? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. All right. Now here, I'm on to the last two tips here. I know this is a long episode, guys. I hope that you are enjoying this. I just had so much to share and so many mistakes I've made, and I hope that this helps you guys out. So i I think we don't talk about this enough when we talk about our kids. We don't talk about quality as much as we talk about quantity. And right now, I want you to focus on the quality time and the presence you have when you are with your kids over how much time you're spending with them. Did you know that – this is a fact, by the way. Time studies have shown this. Full-time working mothers today spend more time, more quality time with their children than full-time stay-at-home moms did in the 50s. Chances are, if you are working or even doing housework, you are guilting yourself for not doing enough. And if that stat doesn't make you feel better, then 
think about this too. Let's be honest. If somebody said plank for two minutes, it would feel like two hours. And a long phone call with a great friend or a nap that maybe is two hours long, it goes by in a flash. Time is not linear, right? It's not a straight magic minute for value exchange. How you spend that time and the quality of it matters. And so your kids are the same. They don't care if you spent two hours with them or if you spent 10 minutes with them. What matters is that you were there, that you had fun with them, that they laughed, that you made a memory. So here are a couple of tips. And I'm working on getting better at this all the time because I really struggle with this overachiever in me. So here are some of the things that have helped me. So I commit to every day making a memory. So doing something fun with her. It doesn't have to be big. It might just be a throwing on a a couple songs and doing a dance party. It might be bath time and putting my phone away and doing bubbles. It might be a swim, not right now in our pool, but you know, a walk. And this is, this is a must. And as I wrote out these notes, there was a load of dishwashers in the sink and laundry to be done, but we had blown bubbles. We played hopscotch. We danced and we had a bath and it was like, it was such a fun day and It brings tears to my eyes just thinking about this because that is what matters. That is important. Some other tips to be really present and focus on quality time. If you haven't already heard this, like release the pressure to have a perfect home. But this is hard. But you literally could spend your entire life cleaning up after children. And this is – it becomes especially hard when you're working from home. Decide what your enough is. I try and do about 20 to 30 minutes a day maybe once or twice a day, depending on what's going on. Sometimes I have to do dishes and cooking and things like that. Um, And I'll often try and do that maybe at nighttime as I'm winding down too or early in the morning and I'll turn on a course or an audiobook or a podcast. So it's kind of me time too. But my house is not perfect and there's probably still sand downstairs, but that means that we went to the beach and I'm so happy for that memory and I would not trade it for unsandy floors any day. This one's a little embarrassing. Um... But I got to say it, sometimes it is a habit for me to reach for my phone. Maybe you can relate to this. I'm still working on it. But I find that setting limits away from my phone helps. So I will set a timer, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is, and put my phone away and set that timer and be like, I'm not going to touch it until that timer goes off. And it's a fun little challenge and just reminds me that um, I don't need my phone. I really don't. Nothing's, Nothing's going wrong. Uh, the last thing I want to say here is to include your kids wherever you can. And I talked about it with work, but it can also be, you know, your workout. And yeah, it's not perfect, but maybe it can be, maybe it can be still be fun. Can you do yoga together? Do some of the kids' yogas and still get your stretch in. Maybe you listen to meditation music, maybe, and you play some instruments or you snuggle together or do conference calls while you're snuggling. We, we did that today. Include your kids where it makes sense and where it feels good too. So far in the last couple of weeks, we've done piano meditations, we've done dance parties, we've done music classes, gymnastic classes, and some workouts, and it's not perfect. This is about learning to dance in the rain instead of trying to control the weather, right? As much as possible, guys, no matter what is going on, we still deserve quality time with our children. And again, it's not about not about the time. It's about us being there and making the memory and having our kids be like, I remember those days when we had fun together. Here's one of the tricks, and I kind of teased this before, but I'm really excited to share it with you guys because I'm usually not this crafty creative mom, but here's something that I did, and I think it's really fun. So I did not want a super strict schedule because it just doesn't work for our life, but I did want to have ideas, and I didn't always want to be scrambling for things to do with Sonoma. So what I did is I created three separate jars, and I researched activities to fill the jars. So the three jars are this. There are things to do when it's raining outside or cold outside things we do together when it's sunny, and things we do while mom and dad are working. And what I did is as I came across ideas that I saw maybe on social media or online or had friends recommend them, I'd write the activity down on a little piece of paper, and I'm still doing it by the way, and then I'd fold it up and I'd put it in the appropriate jar. So I've got the three jars, things we do together when it's raining, things we do together when it's sunny, and things we do together while mom, or things we do while mom and dad are working. And it has been so fun to then when we have those moments where it's like, oh, it's raining outside today, what should we do? Instead of, um, being like, oh man, I, like take, I would take me an hour to research what to do. I just go to the jar and I let her pull it out, which is really fun. And we do whatever activities on there. And same thing when it's sunny. And when I need to get some work done, that's something else I can do is I could be like, okay, what are some of the things we can do right now? Or you can do by yourself. You can use Pinterest and Google and blogs and podcasts and activities, movies that you've been wanting to watch together, movies that they love, like anything you want to do, anything you have around the house to add ideas in. Maybe it's playing with instruments. Maybe it's playing with the chalk. Like it doesn't have to be fancy, big things. It's little basic things that are lots of fun. You can get your family to help too. Like if you have kids, get them to help. If you have friends that are creative or you follow people online, get their ideas. So I have to give a shout out to Sarah and Chantel and Stephanie, all my teacher friends. They've been giving me such great ideas and 
sending pictures of their kids and it's been super helpful for me. Then I literally just pull an activity from the jar when I want to do work or pull it when it's a sunny day or whatever. And it's just really fun. It's such a great way to have fun ideas when you're stumped or bored or too tired to think of ideas of things to do together. So I hope you like that little tip. Um, Again, I'm not the crafty, super awesome mom in this sense, but this has really helped me out and I hope that 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 helps you out too. And maybe you can even get your kids to take the lead on that and do it or your partner. (laughs) Okay. Last thing I want to say, and it's probably the most important besides mindset. Mindset's the most important. This is next. Give yourself grace. You guys, if you're like me, chances are you're getting frustrated sometimes that your house is messy. Um, Maybe you're yelling at your kids. Maybe you're not being who your best self all the time. The worst thing that you can do is to guilt yourself more. This is a chance for you to be really, really present to all of the mess, to acknowledge your mistakes to yourself and to your children. This is your chance to make sure you don't let yourself get overrun with guilt or negativity. Hear me on this loud and clear. You can't guilt yourself into being a better parent, a better leader, or a better human. You can't guilt yourself into being a better parent. Did you know that? I know. Mom guilt, like squash that because that doesn't make us better parents. Look, everything's changing. Timelines are changing. Everything. I tried to get this out to you literally weeks and weeks and weeks, a month ago, over a month ago, but it didn't happen. I've had to keep up with client commitments, which I'm so grateful for. And so this podcast came second and that's okay. That's going to happen for you too. Some things are going to take longer. If you're like me and you've had to step back in your career perhaps or your business and might be like I'm coming to terms with, which is the fact that my business is going to grow slower. I know mine has already and it will because I'm a parent. Maybe in your job, you won't get the promotion the next time around or you're not able to step up and lead this project or be on the front lines of the crisis because you're with your family. This is something I have struggled with. Um, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of ways I want to serve you. I have, guys, you should see the list of podcast episodes I have drafted and I just don't have time to get them all out to you. I want to step up and lead in my community and create great things for you guys. But I know that this season is my season as a mom with a young daughter. And that for me right now takes precedent over being able to be the most active speaker and coach and entrepreneur out there right now. And instead, I've really focused on allowing myself to make memories and instead supporting the amazing entrepreneurs out there that I know are doing great things as that I wish I could be doing more of, but I can't, but I'll share them and I'll spend my money with them and share them with you guys like Van City Business Babes and the great work they're doing and Hervana. Oh my gosh, Meredith is just... You guys, if you're entrepreneurs and looking for great communities, Van City Business Babes, Hervana, amazing. Lindsay, who did podcast episode number 10 with us, her Radical Connectors. The Ace Class, I went to their event and they were doing online events and they're amazing too. And Stu McLaren and his Tribe Course, you guys, like I wish I could be doing all this stuff. I wish I could be rolling out new products and doing more interviews and like just doing all the things, but I know that's not my season and this is a really hard realization. I will not lie. There's other people doing great work and this is my moment to be an amazing mom and to capture these memories of my daughter. My time to crush it in my business is going to come and your time to crush it in your career, in maybe in your travels that you're not doing, whatever that is. Your time to crush it is going to come but it's not going to come. For me, it's not going to come at the expense of my sanity, of my joy, of Sonoma's childhood and of our relationship and our memories together. I won't have that. Hold that big picture vision in your life, my friend. And this is, you know, I said this at the beginning and want to just like bring this full circle, guys. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Remember, this is a snapshot in your life. This is a sprint and this too shall pass. So use this time as a connection with your children, with yourself, with your family, and be really honest about where you're struggling and making mistakes. Give yourself and those around you permission to get it wrong. (laughs) And I know that you will be amazed at the growth and the positivity you'll end up feeling and getting from this experience. There are silver linings. Okay, was that a lot? Let me summarize a little bit of what we talked about here because I know this was a lot. I really, really hope this is helpful. So number one, get a foundation. Get on the same team as your partner. Communicate, 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 communicate. Get clear on what your enough is. What is it for work and what is it for parenting? Really figure out what must get done. What are your non-negotiables in your household for you, your personal care, your work, and release everything else? And the third question to chat is what is the experience you guys want to have? What is the story you're writing as a family during this time? Number two, it's possible to make it work. I shared a bunch of productivity tips in there. It's not going to be perfect, but you guys, find what works for you as a family. 
Number three, use this as an experiment in what's actually important. You are going to learn about prioritizing what is making a difference, what is moving the needle in your work, in your business, in your life, and what no longer needs to happen. This is a gift. And frankly, only those of us with kids are going to be get that gift because we're the ones that are forced to do what we used to do on 40 or 50 hours in much less time. Take care of yourself, you guys. Make it quality downtime for yourself. Get your kids set up. Before you do the work, get your kids set up so that they know what they're doing and they they have some things that they can do and they got fresh diapers and food and whatever they need in there. Take them to the bathroom. Get your kids set up too so that when you're ready to work, they're ready to have fun too. Focus on quality time with your children. This <laughs> doesn't matter if you can spend four hours a day or five minutes a day. Your kids are going to love the amount of time that they do spend with you if it's quality. Make some beautiful memories with your kids right now. And give yourself grace. You're doing an amazing job. If you haven't already heard this today or yesterday or every day, because my goodness, you deserve to hear it every day, you're amazing. This is unbelievably unprecedented times. This is hard. And you're here and you can do hard things. You are brave. You are resilient. You are resourceful. You are creative. You are amazing. All right, don't run away just yet because I've got a few surprises coming up. This episode is ending with some awesome bangs. So I, first of all, i got to say thank you so much for listening If you've got a partner, a friend, a colleague, or a boss that needs to hear this, please share this with them. I'm a mama working from home, probably like you, and so every time you share this podcast, you guys, it makes a really big difference. I don't have a lot of time, clearly, to promote or cross-promote or set up ads and fancy funnels and get this out everywhere I want to. I really rely on word of mouth at this point in my podcast. Each and every one of you that listens, thank you. And when you share, it makes a big, big difference. So thank you. Okay, so there's a little surprise in the show notes for you. So remember I told you Sonoma pooped on me and then, you know, once on the stairs and also dropped her first swear word on a call? Well, I posted the video and the photos for you guys in the show notes, so you're going to want to check those out. If you need a laugh, trust me, that'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm also going to be sharing it on my social media, so if we're not already connected, make sure you follow, find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And the links up for all those are in the show notes. If you love the tip in this episode and you haven't yet, make sure you go listen to episode 18 and 19 for more work from home tips. And while you're at it, make sure you take the special quiz I created just for you to find out your work from home style. It's easy, it's fun to fill out, and I'll give you some specific tips for your personality, whether you're extroverted, introverted, or trying to do this with kids. So you can take the quiz at lisamishow.com forward slash work from home. And of course, link is in the show notes. Every time, links are in the show notes. (laughs) Before you go, I have to remind you, I want to remind you of the most important things. If you hear nothing else through this whole episode, if you hear nothing else that I ever tell you on a podcast, period, or in my life, listen and hear me on this. Your mindset right now matters the most. These strategies are just ideas. They're going to change. They can be adapted and that's okay. Your strategies will change, but your mindset is forever. Keep cultivating the mindset you need for success. Keep cultivating your resilience, your creativity, your possibility, your imperfection, and keep getting your action. Guys, stay tuned for next week's episode. I'm sharing all about creating my business. It's been four years and I've learned a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, So, and everything in between, guys. So I'm sharing how I grew my business, a little bit of what I did, and some of the things that I wish I knew four years ago when I started my business. So if you wondered ever about what are the things I wish I'd done differently, what are the things I'm so glad I invested in, how I've created memberships and courses and any of those things, I'm going to share some of my favorite tips and resources to help you whether you're getting started or scaling your business or if you're just curious and want to hear what the heck I'm doing, what I regret, that may help you. You guys are going to love that episode. So thank you again for listening. Golden Girl, you are amazing. This is a challenging time. You are stronger than you even know. Can I just say this too? I feel like this is such a unique time for so long, for so long, especially as moms, I think. We've had to work as if we don't have kids and parent as if we don't have jobs. And that pressure, whether that comes from society or mostly ourselves, I think, is seriously insane sometimes to pretend like we've got it all together and we can do it all And that pressure is still going to be there if you let it. But for the first time in a very long time, everyone with kids is showing up with kids. We no longer, our world is no longer able to pretend that kids don't exist. And it's such a gift. Even my husband who has had work calls and he works in the energy industry where it's a lot of, a lot of men, even the men in the room are taking time to say hello to the kids. And I just think there's such a gift in this too. I want, this is one of my like deep, deep desires. I want to live in a world where our children are integrated into our work life and we welcome children. 
this is a topic for another day about how we are limited as women because sometimes we can't include our kids. And I'm certainly not saying this pandemic is fixing this because I know it's making things a lot worse in a lot of cases for women. But I do think that there's a gift in seeing kids at work. And I, I hope that's one of the lasting impacts of all of this. That we get used to seeing children because they freaking exist and they're awesome and they're hilarious and it's normal and it takes a village. So as for you, my hope for you is this. My hope is that you take this time to communicate and strengthen your relationship with your partner and your family. That you show up with intention for what you want this experience to be. That you come out of this with a new lens on what's truly important and some new productivity tips to help make it happen. But most of all, that you just stop doing things that you don't need to do anymore. I hope you realize that self-care is not optional and it's not only about the spa. That now more than ever it matters that everything comes from you and you need to feel good to do good and be good in this world. I hope that what comes out of this and probably after some tears and frustrations and breakdowns and all of the things that through this challenge you become stronger because sometimes, just like muscles, (laughs) just like working out, sometimes we need to break down and tear apart a bit so that we can rebuild stronger than ever. And when you do, I know you're going to be ready for more fun, for more presence, for more connection, and more grace. Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls podcast.